Hey, everybody. I hope you had a lovely uh, Christmas. I hope you had a good New Year's. I hope you... Well, we'll just stop there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you stopped watching TV on the 7th. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you are a fan of weird things that happen on Elvis's birthday, this was your year. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, uh. <laughs> Uh, this yeah. is episode 10. It's episode um, 10. Diaz. As the yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, uh, of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. True, we do that. We do it indeed. We took uh, Christmas off and we took New Year's off, which I think was a good choice. Um, I had a lovely... How was your Christmas, by the way? Um, fine, which is my highest rating for Christmas. Yeah. It was fine. Um, here's the thing that happened. My, I couldn't go see my mother because of uh, COVID. Sure. Uh, so she mailed me a huge box with all my presents in it. Oh. And it never arrived. Oh. So my punishment for that has been <laughs> talking to her on the phone every single day while she comes up with new ways for me to find the package. So she sent me to the post office. I got yelled at by the post office. And she said, maybe it got sent to 15th Street instead of 16th Street where you live. So go talk to the super at 250. Mm. Uh, so I did that. Nothing. And every day she has a new scheme or a new thing that might have happened besides the package being stolen, which is definitely the thing that happened. Yeah. So um, I offered to just give her the money back for the gifts. But I'm, I'm told it's not about the money. It's apparently it's about the chase. Uh, I happen to know it was a sweater and a wallet. Two things I have yeah. already. Um, God bless her. But um, my Christmas was fine. And then everything after that has been uh, this weird uh, mystery that's not good. I, it would be awesome if you found out she revealed later just so you know, I didn't actually send you any gifts. I sent you a mystery. <laughs> you know, I would respect the hell out of that. I wanted, I wanted to bond over, <laughs> over loss, and, <laughs> loss and tragedy. Yeah. I uh, for Christmas I uh, got Chinese food, which is just what you do if you're a Jew. Best. And uh, for my wife purchased me crying she got a uh she got a painting <laughs> roy orbison 45 she got me a painting of my departed dog buddy oh. such a sweet boy i mean goodness and you know i'm and i open it up and who i don't know who did it but they're a very good artist and lord uh -huh. She knows you. Yeah, and it felt, it was a good cry, and it was good to, like I've always said about crying, you know, if if like somebody breaks your heart and you cry, that's a good thing, because if you didn't cry, then it didn't mean anything. Yeah, and also then you get a tumor instead. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm saving that for my birthday, not Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was for my special day. Yeah, exactly. I'm getting the tumor, yeah. Missed. <laughs> so and then she got me a bunch of stuff for for my birthday which was a couple days yesterday which was just a bunch of ireland stuff because i had a trip planned to ireland this year and then something happened uh, so, so, something yeah. happened to disrupt my 2020 plans to go to ireland uh, i'm trying to remember well, what I, I couldn't uh, speak the language man man i got busy <laughs> your duolingo was held up i didn't uh i needed to practice drinking oh yeah and you do need practice yeah i've been getting You're famously bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i am practicing a lot but i have not gotten any better <laughs> i'm fine i can like i like bourbon now which is half the problem because it's uh instant it works <laughs> immediately right you don't have that ramp up. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and I 
used to love it because uh, I would go to parties and then you could just have a bourbon and walk around and it would last you a long time because it's very strong and yeah. you don't slam it and you walk around the party and you don't have to talk to the bartender again or get in a line. So I loved it. But at home, you're not talking to anyone. So you're just drinking it. And with like in 14 minutes, I want to fight and there's no one here. It's bad. So um, I'm getting better at uh, water. <laughs> I'm getting better at drinking water. That's awesome. <laughs> you don't have to do. Uh, and New Year's was fine. I don't, yeah. never cared about New Year's. So Yeah. This is the New Year's I always wanted, which is uh, at home. Yeah. And not trying to find an Uber at 345. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, New Year's has always been dumb. The only thing I enjoyed was watching uh, some of New Year's Rock and Eve and watching one of the bands, I can't remember who go, said, um, hey, you at home, clap along. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty great. Because <laughs> I, I know you're trying, but uh, no. Everybody's trying, yeah, nobody knows what to do. <laughs> so good. I'm, uh, I'm about to... I don't know how much I should disclose. Well, hardly anybody's watching this. Uh, I'm, I'm about to write for the Golden Globes. Oh, great. As I have done more than once. And uh, the first meeting, the first meeting is usually like, what should we do jokes about? And this time the first meeting is, what are we gonna do? <laughs> like the two hosts are in two different cities. Are we gonna have like a Zoom audience? Like every single device is bad. Yeah. So we're going to have a meeting to decide <laughs> how to do it. Oh, that's uh, cool. Which really makes me laugh. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I wish I could record the meeting because it's going to be more fun than the show, probably. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, um, we'll get into this in a second, but I will say that Zoom shows one of my favorite things about Seth and Colbert and you know, any of them right now is the excessive pregnant pauses <laughs> because, you know, co comedians are fundamentally insecure, but you don't know that when you watch a comedian because they're continually validated throughout the show. Right. So they hear the, okay, you're good at this. You're good at this. You're good at this. You're good at this. Cause you hear right. the laughs. And even a guy like Seth, I know for sure is deeply insecure because he's a comic. Sure. He would, you know, he's a lovely man, but he wouldn't be a comic if he wasn't in, on some level, like trying to prove something up to himself or to the universe or whatever. And so watching him go, ah, is great television. <laughs> it really is. It's very enjoyable. Uh, and especially for us fellow comics who know exactly what's happening. Yep. Every, every time his eyes dart around or something. And I, I just want to give him a hug and go, that was a good joke. That was good. <laughs> it was well told. Good job. <laughs> We're really enjoying, I certainly am enjoying the freedom of, uh, you know, normally you're about to do a joke and you are tense and then the audience laughs and your tension goes away. Yeah. Or they don't laugh and your tension ratchets up. <laughs> And now we are operating with neither of those. Right. There's no tension before the joke because you know nothing's going to happen. And then after the joke, there's no reward. Yeah. You're just like, it's uh, a, like falling through space, knowing you're not going to hit anything. You're just yeah. falling all the time. The first couple months of doing Zoom shows, which are just really better rehearsals is what they are better yeah. than a norm you know um i i liken it to when i had to give up drinking uh soda because mm -hmm. my body was used to this chemical burst and not getting it would give me headaches and the first few months and even now still to a degree but the first few months were like a lot of like surprise sadness and i'm like oh because <laughs> i'm not getting the endorphins of an audience yeah. And now my body doesn't know what to do because it has to go back to trying to be a regular person who should be able to function. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
so you have all all the things you should have learned in uh, 50 years yeah uh, you didn't because no. you had a different thing yep and now uh, you're a husk <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean and not just you I mean one is now a husk yes um, yeah <laughs> I you know we talk all the time about what is going to happen to our physical bodies the first time an actual audience rolls in yeah and um, a joke really hits and everyone loses their fucking minds with laughter. Yeah. I'm like, oh, we just might, all our orifices might just open up <laughs> and we might, everything might fall out of us. Yeah. Yeah. Just to be crass, but maybe accurate. I'm pretty sure I'm going to come. Yeah. There might be jizz. I think there will be. And, and you know, it'll be, that's natural. It'll be the kind where it's, super satisfying not to like oh, i had to do this it'll be like wow i feel complete for a second yeah i can really think now yeah you know that feeling when you're with somebody who you actually care about and you're doing the thing versus <laughs> the perfunctory thing yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it'll be love jizz <laughs> Country new album, right oh that's the song we should have done oh well <laughs> is that so, on the stranger <laughs> that's right <laughs> so the song alex picked this week uh before this week he picked at the end of episode nine is uh, a, a big bite of a song it is good night saigon the big and, swing uh, I'm going to give a little background for myself in relationship to Vietnam and how I think about Vietnam, because that the song, of course, is about Vietnam. Um, yes. So I grew up, I was a little kid in the 70s because uh, I was born in 68. So I was a little kid. Vietnam still existed and there were people who were still dealing with it. Sure. But but it was at a time when I think probably families, for the most part, were trying not to talk about it because it was an open wound. Right. So, of course, that means as a kid, I didn't hear about it that much. And then it became something I heard about mostly through comedians, your George Carlins and stuff. Right. So I got Vietnam, the punchline. And I got because of being a in a liberal family i got exclusively for a long time the perspective of a bad unjust war which certainly is a valid point of view and then as i grew up i got now we're just gonna make a shit ton of vietnam movies so i got that was part of my young movie going experience yeah and then i got mash is korea but it's really vietnam <laughs> right the yeah. movie was Korea, by the way. The movie was, was about Korea. Korea. It wasn't yeah. an allegory. It wasn't substituting. It was about Korea. The TV show was Vietnam, even right. though it Which was... Which weird, weird tonal shifts for that reason. <laughs> drastic. That show's funny, and it had multiple tonal shifts. It went the shift from the movie to the TV show, and then the TV show from the Henry Blake years to the... Alan Alda's running everything years oh, are yes. drastic. Yeah. And I love the show regardless of its uh, flaws. I think that they're artistic flaws from good intentions. Alan Alda is almost the actor's Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I'm thinking of, there was an episode where there was a, he was confronting a colonel and the colonel was very like, careless with his troops by like getting them hurt and killed all the time uh no sorry the colonel was in charge of like keeping track of how many soldiers died and he had a ledger and he was trying to find out if this kid had died uh and he was being very crass about it and alan alda's character hawkeye I uh, was very upset at this colonel, and I just remember that uh, he had written the episode, and the colonel's name was Bloodworth. <laughs> and I was like, that's too much. <laughs> it could be Henderson. Stay, <laughs> you don't have to, don't do all the things. Yeah. Which, you know, 
kind of brings us pretty nicely to this song. Yeah, I wonder if it was originally Bloodbath and somebody talked him down. <laughs> it's more like, Alan, listen. Yeah. <laughs> the network called again. Uh, listen, like, Hawkeye, I'm a Colonel, Colonel Killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I'm a healer. If you put <laughs> yeah. me in jail, who's going to operate on all these soldiers? Yes. I can do whatever I want. And now, sex with nurses. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there was the uh, that was the other turn that happened in the show too was that yes. Alan Alda, feminist, good, sure, but at some point he became uncomfortable with the womanizing, so he made Hawkeye uh, ridiculed for that, which I think actually that's kind of a good creative move. Sure, he kept, he kept him a womanizer, but he made that not admirable. Right, he made it a character flaw. <laughs> yeah. Instead just a thing that happened all the time yeah um i remember the first seasons it was like all the married guys were had girlfriends yeah it was a lot about like casual infidelity anyway that's it's for a, another podcast <laughs> indeed which i'm sure is accurate so getting into um good night saigon your your growing up with vietnam in a background detail it was very similar to yours in terms of where I learned different things, except that I had a parent who was there, who had gone to the Vietnam War um, late in the action and in the back lines, but still very much in the war and of the war. And so my growing up experience was hearing a lot about why, like a lot of obviously defensive behaviors about well, we had to be there. It was very important that we were there. So it, you know, I was told it was necessary and good and righteous. And then shortly after that, comedians were telling me otherwise, movies were telling me otherwise. And, uh, you know, I, I got into reading a lot about it. Um, and yeah, it was a wedge in my family between myself and my dad. Okay. You know, it, when I wanted to start a fight with him, which I did often, yeah. um, that was a good way to do it. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just a handy thing. And be like, well, why were we even there, you idiot? And then immediate fight. Yeah. Um, you know, I would have found something else probably, but. Yeah, but that was useful. Wow. But that was useful. Yeah. Um, wow. Back and you know, I don't know what it did to him. I was young enough that I didn't know him before that, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, but... my father was a World War II veteran. And uh, a much easier war to um, talk about from the sense of, yeah, you know, we all agree we needed to do this. You know? Right. Unless you were German, you fought on the German side, then it was probably rough in your family. Yeah. But well, like, no, we had to do this because uh, they'd kill us otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> they have different rules so and then before we talk and then billy joel himself and i did a little bit of normally i don't want to research what other people think of a song because i just like to know what you and i think of a song <laughs> sure because that's the show but it felt like i should at least get some perspective on what other people think since it's a big the topic itself is huge and i thought i wasn't sure because i was like was Billy, I know Billy Joel wasn't in Vietnam. I was like, was he even potentially going to go? And yeah, he was. He was the right age. He, in an interview once, said he had thought about going to Canada. He was very honest about it in an interview. He had thought about scrambling and go to, going to Canada. But he right. picked a pretty high number in the draft. And so, so he took his chances? Yeah, so he was fairly... So he didn't get out of it because of family connections. He didn't have that nonsense and he didn't volunteer, but he knew a lot of guys who went. Yeah. And I have so much empathy. I really do for, I have empathy for guys who felt like they had to enlist because I think about myself, if I had been that age, knowing that my father fought in world war II and not yeah. knowing that this war was going to be garbage. Right. That, yeah, that is another thing that everyone kind of forgets when they're arguing about it is like, oh, we didn't know a whole lot beforehand. Yeah. About how necessary it was. 
yeah what kind of war it was going to be how long it would last like nobody knew anything uh yeah. they just knew that their fathers had gone to world war ii yeah. and every generation went to a war and here was a war and and up until then um because you only have you know really all of our perspectives is limited to the 50 or 60 years when we're aware of it as much as we like to think we learn from history we do a little bit but it's that you know palpable history that really matters to us and at that point as far as you know the u.s only went to wars when they had to and it was good and righteous yeah certainly how it was presented yeah so I have all the sympathy in the world. So then getting into this song, I would also just like to preface this by saying a lot of veterans love this song. Yes. Um, I feel like a lot of them hate it also. True. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of uh, people I remember were mad at him for doing this song because he had not gone. Yeah which I think is always a little stupid uh, <laughs> yeah. to be mad at an artist, you know, so, or somebody for writing a story that didn't actually happen to them because yeah. that's all they do is write stories that didn't happen to them. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, some version of it probably happened to him and certainly he heard a lot of these stories. Um, but, you know, he got the same amount of uh, pushback from Allentown. I think a lot of people were mad about Allentown because they're like, you don't know what it's like being a fucking steel worker. I was like, yeah, of course. And then nobody wants to hear 500 songs about playing a piano. Yeah. And I think he gets a little bit of the, you're not Bruce Springsteen. This is not what you do. Yeah. And I don't think that's fair either because you could like Bruce Springsteen better if you do. I like Bruce Springsteen fine, but I can't listen to a lot of it the way I can just listen to Billy Joel. So that's just me. Yeah. Oh, I'm the same. I'm like, yeah, he, I think Springsteen is a better lyricist, but his songs uh, tend to sound the same because he has no vocal range. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, this is better a melody. And this is a beautiful song melodically. It, yeah, it really is. It really is. The opening piano chords are amazing. Yeah, let's talk um, about talk about that and so in the beginning we hear crickets uh we hear crickets and then we hear chopper blades yeah um which is a, maybe a little it's a theatrical song yeah for sure um so it's kind of okay yeah i think uh it's also a time when was this 81 81 yes um it was a time when a lot of producers were putting in sound effects and a, yeah. there was a lot going on in the studio for these albums. A quick side note, it occurred to me, you could take this song, as we've talked about Billy Joel, the uh, musical theater guy, you could take this song and put it in Miss Saigon and it would work. <laughs> it would pretty much work. It yeah. would be perfect. Yeah. Be you great, wouldn't but... have to change the arrangement. <laughs> it's true. You just need a chorus doing it. And a chorus doing, and we all went down together, would kill you in theater. You would cry. Yes. You would get a Tony. They, uh -huh. And Miss Saigon already had the helicopter that came into the set. So, so oh, yeah, there. the... The beginning of the song, like you said, it's a little bit of uh, crickets. Um, we hear the helicopter from far away. It gets closer. And then the piano, which is gorgeous. The very beginning is very simple. Considering yeah. how much production value, that part, bare bones. Just a yeah. little teeny tiny entrance. Yeah. Nice and like sinister, but operatic. I love yeah. it. Uh, it was one of the few things I learned to play on the piano. It was just oh, the cool. opening chords. I learned to play them over and over again. I <laughs> never got further than that, but it was just such a good sound. So if uh, anybody needs to hire somebody to pay, play the beginning of this song. I'll get you started. You're the guy. You, you got to take it from there. <laughs> um, but uh, the one thing I will say about this song is as we go through it, 
it seems like a song not about Vietnam, but about Vietnam movies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of, it's a little, it's a little uh, Billy the Kid in some yeah. ways. It's like, I mean, tonally, the idea that we were all gung ho and we all couldn't wait. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> that is absolutely not the take on Vietnam. Yeah. That everybody was gung ho and we would all go down together. I think the tone was, let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. We don't well, like this. And we want to. I don't think you can tell from the lyrics, but maybe I just don't know enough about the military, but I have been told or I've read that specifically just for a little background, it's about Marines. That's what I've been told. Yeah. Paris Island. Paris uh, Island, there you go. The Marine training base. Okay, there you go. So that's, so maybe, why don't you take yeah, us through maybe. the beginning of the lyrics? Well, that is also probably why he got some more shit for it, because Marines don't want anyone. They wouldn't let army people sing this song. <laughs> we met as soulmates on Paris Island. There you go. We left as inmates from an asylum. Uh, I want to know, does that mean we left Paris Island or Vietnam? I feel like yeah. it's we left, we met in, in Paris Island and then when this was all over, we were nuts. We we, we left as inmates from an asylum. Okay. And some of us then got released into the streets because Reagan was a monster. You're right. Yeah. And nobody wants to fund the VA. Yeah. Uh, in either party. Yeah. There, I brought the nation together. <laughs> well, and, we, <laughs> and we were sharp, as sharp as knives. Does it echo there? It does not. Not yet. Not yet, right? And we were so gung ho to lay down our lives. Yeah. Now that you mentioned the Marines, I'm like, that more likely accurate. Yeah. Um, I grew up knowing a lot of people who had gone to Vietnam, and they were like my dad and his friends. And none of them were super invested in the outcome of the war. It was more about their personal outcome and how soon they could get back. Yeah. And, and or stay alive and or what they could steal and ship home <laughs> in some cases uh, or what like side deals they had or who they could have sex with and marry. Yeah. Um, so they were a little less targeted than the Marines. Those are better priorities anyway. Yeah. Probably. A little less dangerous. Yeah, I, I think. Um... So we met as soulmates. Is a weird what, thing to say. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Um, is is it? It feels like that means you're you're trying to say that we're we're bond. It's a it's a bad metaphor. I think is what it is a little bit because soulmates. <laughs> it's because I know what I think I know what he's trying to say, which is that yeah. we're bound together with this common. Yeah, we were we had a brotherhood. Yeah. Um, yeah, the idea that we met as soulmates. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think it was, it's, do you do, do crossword puzzles? Uh, not really. Sometimes in a crossword puzzle, they'll have like a little extra game inside of it. And when they do that, they often have to cram in a lot of weird words that don't quite work. Yeah. To, to, so that the game works. And that's what this is, I think. He yeah. read, he saw the phrase Paris Island, and then he got an asylum. And he goes, oh, fuck, that's great. And now I'm going to cram in <laughs> the rest of it so yeah. I can have that sweet rhyme. Are you talking about like when they do like sort of cryptic crosswords within crosswords? Or yeah, or like, oh, the, the clues in the middle, like make a picture or something. Or Oh, OK, yes, yes. Or it's a whole puzzle without using the letter V. <laughs> no, they have these extra little games sometimes yeah. and it always fucks up the rhythm yeah and makes crossword puzzles always uh i like the idea of a crossword puzzle and then sometimes i've done crossword puzzles and i have thought am i just dumb and then i'm like this is not good for my self-esteem i think i'm just not going to do crossword puzzles 
Yeah, it's you get better at them if you do a lot of them, and then yeah. you realize, oh, it's never about me being smart. It was about knowing what crossword puzzles want, <laughs> which is less fun, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, I have a friend who made a living for a little while making crossword puzzles and oh, like very puzzle nice. books and stuff. And yeah, he, he would he designed cryptic crosswords, which he tried to teach me how they work, and I think they're neat. But I'm just, I just can't. It's too much. It's hard to talk me into walk into watching a whole season of a show because I feel like oh. it's too much commitment. Gotcha. So yeah, it's not for you. Yeah, I, I like a thing that you do and then that's done. <laughs> yeah, I think that's you know a lot of us end up in comedy. It's like all right, I only have to write five minutes worth of shit. Yeah. Great. <laughs> And then the great, yeah, and then when I'm done telling these jokes, no one needs, no one's going to ask me to tell them again until, unless I want to. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're done. And we are so gung-ho to lay down our lives. I like that lyric. I guess the other thing I'd say about that lyric before we move on is that that's such a, it is true that people romanticize war and maybe less so oh, now, yes. but still. I'm uh, Googling because I want to know the origin of the phrase gung-ho. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thought to have originated from Chinese. Huh. I guess uh, that, yeah. <laughs> that would have been a pretty good guess. <laughs> yeah. And just to, I mean, even just to contextualize that lyric with the events of the last week, you've seen people who romanticized a dumb cause yeah. supporting a game show host who's lying about the election. And yet so many layers of stupidity in believing and all that stuff. And yet you had people who were ready to lay, and in a in one woman's case, did lay down her life. Yeah. So, so the lyric rings true. Yeah, you do have to put put aside a lot of critical thinking to get that enthusiastic about something. Yeah. Again, like I think to myself, I'm like, I like comic books, right? I like comic book movies and pop culture. I've never gone to Comic-Con or dressed up because I'm like, I'm not going to go buy a costume or right. make one. Fuck you. I'm not going <laughs> to do that. Yeah. And then to have the, to feel that way about, no, I, I can't imagine feeling that way, but. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. The things you have to not think about to get there. Yeah. I, d I don't want to do anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look at this. Look at us now. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's take a thing we already like and know about, yep. and we'll sit in chairs and talk about it. Do you know how much I edit on this show? No, I don't. I have never looked at it, but I knew that anyway, because I know you. Like, no, he's not going to go through this and cut out the shit. Nope. This nope. is the show. Hope you enjoy it, you humps. <laughs> you, want, you want Billy Joel content? It's 9% of what we're talking about. <laughs> That's what you get. Yep. Do the next chunk of lyrics. All right. We came in spastic, like uh -huh. tameless horses. We left in, left in plastic as numbered corpses. I think yeah. that might, that's brutal, but I think that's kind of eh, perfectly written. Don't you think? I think it is very much not the first draft. Yeah. Because <laughs> he very obviously had written nameless corpses. And then somebody explained to him, no, the names are on the corpses. Yeah. You have to change that, dummy. Yeah. And also, if you say nameless corpses, you're talking about a, a different issue with Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, uh, which is Bad, and we learned, uh, yeah, filing, yeah, and, and also, we learned fast to travel light. Our hands, our arms were heavy, 
but our bellies were tight. I feel like it should be our arms were heavy and our bellies were tight. I don't know why, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. Our arms were heavy. I get it. And our belly, we were, we were overworked and, and underfed, right? That's what. Yeah. I think that's what we're going for. Yeah. Uh, arms, uh, I assume he means actual arms and not armaments. Yeah. Weapons. I, well, I'm assuming, yeah, I, I'm picturing that your arms are heavy. Yeah, our arms are heavy because we're loaded down with arms. We're carrying all the shit, right? Yeah. Um, I, I have no qualms with that set of lyrics just as far as what it communicates to me. It does paint a picture. We Left in Plastic might be like the harshest thing in any of his songs. Yeah. That is grim. <laughs> yeah and accurate yeah um but it he should have changed tameless horses because you think he's gonna say nameless corpses it's so glaring to me <laughs> that he wrote nameless and then had a meeting and probably got belligerent in the meeting and they said no the names are on them because dog tags yeah do you know about dog tags and how they operate in war uh, so I'm familiar with dog tags being your ID, but why don't but go right. more, go more into it? Two metal dog tags. There's always two of them in case something happens. Um, but every dog tag at, has a notch in it at the top. And what is supposed to happen, I have heard, um, is when you come across a fallen comrade you are supposed to take that dog tag and stick it between that person's teeth and oh. then kick their jaw shut so that the dog tag goes up inside the skull between the front two teeth and can't be easily removed. So that when that body is shipped, they will absolutely know who it is. Wow. That's why it has a little notch in it. Ah. <sighs> Wow. Yeah, growing up military yeah. Um, is a weird for show and tell in fourth grade. Wow. Yeah, so not nameless, numbered. Yeah, okay, wow, that's intense. I, uh, I remember coming across my father's Purple Heart because my father uh, lost a leg. I think right. you probably know this, everybody knows this by now. Yeah. And... Uh, it sounds to me like you were able to occasionally at least talk to your father about the subject. We just never talked about it because my dad had what we would now recognize as PTSD. Sure. And what was at that point called a uh, mean father who hits. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But of course he never got like, because like we said before, we are not a good, we are a good country. If you want a country that goes to war, you're not we're not the best country if you want a country that takes care of its veterans yeah it's the coming back from the wars we're not good at yep as uh yeah and you will find that uh people are like worry about the budget suddenly when it's that part of military spending yes gross gross that's the less expensive part yeah. if you were gonna do it yeah yeah uh, grim, but you know, it's a grim song. Yeah. Um, here's where I think this next uh, verse, I guess it's a verse. It's very loose. Um, this is where I start to think like, oh, he maybe watched movies about Vietnam <laughs> or documentaries <laughs> and less uh, talk to anybody. Um, we had no home front. We had no soft soap. They sent us Playboy. <laughs> they gave us Bob Hope. Um, two bad things and then two per fine things. Yeah. I don't know uh, if I'm just supposed to feel the same way about all those things. I like, like that. Is they sent us Playboy said with disdain or is that like, at least there was this. Yeah, I feel like 
or was it just like here's a thing people will recognize as a vietnam thing yeah because i saw it in three movies and a doc <laughs> <laughs> also i don't know who sends i well i guess people do send you playboy but i think you could just subscribe yourself if you need oh to. really from yeah. vietnam oh maybe you can't yeah maybe yeah wonder the bob hope thing is funny to me because my dad was in world war ii so if he saw bob hope he was seeing bob hope the funniest version of bob hope you were gonna see yes but if you saw bob hope in vietnam you'd be like i don't I don't like Bob Hope. <laughs> I'm 20. Yeah. I'm 20. It's the 70s. I want to see Carlin. Oh, he's not coming. It's Bob Hope. Great. Oh, he very much does not want to be here. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> but as far as a, a stereotypical thing that did happen, it definitely was, you know, in Vietnam, it would have been Bob Hope and then six. Ladies with nice boobs. Sure. Joey Heatherton. Joey Heatherton, yeah. And uh, and <laughs> telling you that this is what you're fighting for, boys. Right. And, and like also part. in World War II, you got Bob Hope, who was a little more, he was a little more present to the actual situation. And yeah. by the 70s, the Bob Hope you got was the guy who was, uh, super pro-industrial complex guy whether he knew it or not he was sure he, he was well like he would... and that's not really what you want to see if you're stuck there and you're like oh yeah this is a, this guy's happy i'm here <laughs> right, right. yeah huh um but then again you know how it is when you're in a terrible situation and somebody gives you any entertainment you're like well, yeah i'll, I'll go see that Yep. So then we go, we dug in deep and shot on sight and printed. Not true. Huh? Already not true. Oh, okay. There's, there's a very famous statistic. Maybe this is not true of Marines, but there is a very famous statistic about how few soldiers in Vietnam actually fired their weapons. Oh. There is a, a large percentage who just didn't shoot they just hid as they should because they didn't want to kill somebody they didn't want to kill somebody because they were draftees then they're like well i don't want to be here in the first place i'm certainly not going to kill a guy yeah i'm also um, a, so they, yeah. I'm this also is our most somebody. controversial episode yeah they kind of like understood it was you know after the summer of love and the <laughs> beginning of understanding that people are all the same kind of yeah so there was the beginning of that consciousness in this country. And also, I, how old was the average soldier? 19? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, there was a song. Yeah. No, no, 19. Called 19. No, no, 19. Yeah. The average soldier in World War II was 27, I think. Yeah. I'm throwing out a lot of stats that I have not looked up. <laughs> so I just want to put that out there as a disclaimer. If anything strikes you as a, something to raise a flag around, check it first, because I don't know. But this is what I remember having heard. You're the Billy Joel of statistics. <laughs> I am. I am. Uh, people love my early stuff. Yeah, you're giving people, I, I just want to paint a, give you a sense of statistics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think he would tell you to look it up, but I will. But we dug in deep and shot on sight and prayed, and prayed to Jesus Christ with all of our might. Yeah. Yeah. Probably most of you. Not Billy Joel if he was there, but. Nope. Right. Famously mad at the Catholic Church for not letting him have sex with that lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um. Now, maybe, no, I was going to say this is my least favorite, but it might not be. We had no cameras to shoot the landscape. False. Yeah, also false. False. Uh, uh, the most photographed war <laughs> there ever was. Yeah. Um, you personally maybe didn't, as a soldier, have a camera. Yeah. 
you probably had a journalist. And some of you had cameras. And some of you had cameras. A lot of people had cameras. My dad came back with a lot of fucking photos. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't in combat, but still. Um, we passed the hash pipe and played our doors tapes. Yeah, this is the movie part for sure. This is the movie. That's Platoon. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Literally doors in the soundtrack. Platoon or is it Apocalypse Now? I want to say it's Platoon. Platoon is like more way, the Platoon doors is way more 60s music, right? Than Apocalypse yeah, Now. Yeah, I think so, yes. Yeah. Um, a side note, uh, many years ago, I thought if I ever had, wrote, did a Vietnam movie, I would love to do it with music by like the girl groups and specifically Leslie Gore. <laughs> and I had in my mind an idea of these guys are going into combat. There's Agent Orange. There's blood everywhere. And it goes sunshine, lollipops. And I just <laughs> think that would be very funny. <laughs> It would be very funny, and uh, also go pretty tragic and great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'd just be that and like Herman's Hermits. Oh, <laughs> something tells me I'm into something good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, guys. Um, and the eighth I am. Oh, so yeah, so that's the movie, and then you know. And it was dark, so dark at night. I don't think we're to the echo yet, are we? I think that might be the first one. Yeah. So dark at night, night, night. And he does the echo himself, right? It's not an effect. I feel like he does. He does in concert. And I think that's weird. <laughs> it's weird. It is weird. When I'm listening to the song and I'm just enjoying the song, I can let it just wash over me. Yeah. But when I think about it, it seems silly. It's very silly. And I think he uh, was writing the song and was like, oh, this part should echo. So in his like, you know, apartment or whatever, writing a song. Yeah. And it's like, oh, and then it'll go so dark at night, night, night. That'll be cool. And yeah. then in the studio, they had to say, Billy, we can do that back here. <laughs> we can do that with the board. You don't have to do that. And he's like, oh, right. OK, I won't do it. And then he did it again. <laughs> and they're like, you know what? Leave it in. It's just you can't talk to him. Yeah. Just leave and, it in. Who cares? And because if you had used an echo effect, it would just be a proper echo that went away pretty quick it would feel it would feel good whereas this when he goes night 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 you're just you're just <laughs> repeating a word over and over again which also isn't how yeah. echoes work exactly they fade they fade and also it's not evocative of like being in the jungle in vietnam yeah which i is very soundproof i would think like if this was a song about being camping in a canyon yeah <laughs> it might be a different thing but this is like a weird choice yeah it it's then when it becomes well when it becomes su a little bit musical theater at that point yeah and it, and it feels like if those and again it's a good song and it's it, the intentions behind it i think are sincere you yeah know, i think he's coming at it from a like if you didn't go but your buddies did and you're an artist you're going to tell that story this is what you do yeah yeah and again i agree with you it's silly to be upset that why who are you to tell the story i'm like well then who is anybody to tell any story yeah if you can only tell your story then uh that's one album yep and, and also, quit talking about Rome. None of you were <laughs> Romans. Yeah. And uh, for, give up acting completely. Yeah. That didn't happen to you. Oh, you want to tell me this Bible story? No. I know you're none of these people. Yeah. 
Hello, I'm Jeffrey. No, you're not. <laughs> That's the character's name. Liar. You're a liar. You're not Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> this place sucks. Uh, it was dark, so dark at night, night, night. Uh huh. And, and we that, held on that. to each other like brother to brother. This is better than the soulmates part. Yeah. We held on to each other like brother to brother. That makes sense. We promised our mothers we'd write. I like that. Yeah. This is now like that feels very real and true. Yeah. Um, because you absolutely did do that if you were there yep that feels like at least um uh, a thing you can relate to without going to vietnam <laughs> like you've, yeah. all, you've all been in circumstances where you like hang on to your brothers and you're like we're together and this is us and uh, and you write your mother yep um without you know i don't need a hash pipe and the doors yeah uh, well i have been in that circumstance too <laughs> <laughs> um and we would all go down together. We said we'd all go down together. Yes, we would all go down together. I like it. Me too. It's uh, absolutely how you would react, you know? Yeah. The bonding under fire. Um, and it's, as a phrase, standalone, it's maybe a little hokey, but that's what hoke is for, I think, is yeah. the, those times in life. Yeah. You know? Yep. You're, yeah. I'm okay with it. It occurs to me, too, that lyric, when I think about it, it, um, you know, if you're ever talking to, say, a Marine, and they're telling you a real story or just any military person and they're telling yeah. you a real story if you have any self-awareness if you haven't been in that situation you never go i can relate <laughs> yeah because you can't and there are certain situations that are like that where there's nothing else like it like if you've never been married and somebody's yeah. telling you what it's like to be married you can you can go well i've been in relationships and whatever but it's not the same yeah. And if you've never been in the military, which I have not, a lot of my family has been, my father, my brothers, my uncle, my grandfather, not me. So, you know, when people are telling what it's like, guys like us who haven't been there, if we're wise, we go, man, that's some intense. It's, I can kind of imagine, but Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that speaks to that line, I think. We, we would all go down together because they're bonded with an experience that is uniquely theirs. And it probably speaks to why some people are critical of the song. Yes. Yep, because they uh, have not been there. Yeah, because it's... And like he's... But there's nothing... I One of the critiques the song gets, by the way, which I find I'm also pretty sure is a dumb critique is people say he doesn't take a side in the, like, was it a good or bad war? In the uh, Vietnam controversy. Yeah. About whether or not they should have been at war at all. It doesn't song doesn't say that he shouldn't have been there or should have, but I mean, he absolutely addresses it. Yeah. In the next verse. Well, let's go which on. has a huge built-in problem oh yeah there you go well he doesn't say who is wrong okay go ahead why don't you say this one remember charlie now <laughs> if you know anything about vietnam you know that that was the name for the enemy yeah so what is he doing because the next line is remember baker So uh, in his head, is this like two guys that he went there with? Because if one of them is Charlie, you should change the name for the song. So what I read was that Charlie and Baker are two military code word things. Because I was curious about the, because I have always heard it the same way that you're hearing it, which is remember Charlie, Oh, yeah, so you're referencing the enemy. 
um, remember Baker, but then what I read is those are actually um, things, I don't know if they'd be call signs or whatever, but it's a military code. Hmm. So I've read that. Do you want to Google that while I read the rest of this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do. They left their childhood on every acre. Yeah, that's a good line. They left their childhood on every acre. 19 year old guys fighting across. Yeah. That feels that's nice. That's nice and sad. It's maybe it's not <laughs> as sad as left we left in plastic, but it's still pretty sad. Uh, they are company identifiers, Charlie Company and Baker Company. Yeah, so that's what I had read. Huh. So I guess it's a we Yeah, uh, I guess so. I would bet that um, if we see, I still blame him because it's confusing. Yeah. But if we looked it up, I bet we would learn that Charlie Company and Baker Company had some particularly brutal times yeah there or particularly difficult assignments i don't know but it's written as though that is two guys yeah <laughs> and 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 i think you're right in that the name charlie is complicated uh, to use it in this context because it's yeah. just you know something people said to identify where you know we were looking out for charlie I do remember hearing Charlie Company, and I don't remember what it was. So here I go again, yeah. Googling it. Da, 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 da. Charlie Company uh, is a rifle company of American soldiers. Yeah, it was a, a rifle company. OK. They did have a particularly difficult time. Uh-huh. 45 members of Charlie Company are found responsible for crimes ranging from violation of the rules of war to murder. Ah. Ah. Okay. Not great. All right, Charlie. That's not great. I mean, rules of war is already uh, a problematic phrase. Yeah. Um, isn't that when all the rules break down, you result, yeah. resort to war? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Baker Company um, yields results for a lot of companies that provide baking materials. All right. <laughs> and who was wrong and who was right? It didn't matter in the thick of the fight. Uh, that's a good yeah. observation. Um, certainly true to the persons in the thick of the fight. Yeah. It ultimately does, of course, matter. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere to someone. Indeed. It just doesn't matter that day for sure. And uh well yeah. no, it still matters, but on a very personal basis, you're just trying to get home alive. I think it's uh he's okay to say the song doesn't take a side because the person in the circumstance couldn't take a side. Yeah. Uh so why should I? And I, I agree. And also, I don't know that I would want, because you'd hate that song more if it was just this heavy handed, <laughs> Yeah. you know, if it was just, there was a lyric of like, and, you know, it was a bad war, but should it have been there? Whatever the lyrics would have been, you'd be like, ah. Yeah. If you didn't go, if he had gone and then written a song about how shitty it was to go. Okay. Yeah. But if and you, you know don't what? Interesting. Now that I think about it, the songs that were about why about it's a bad war, those songs exist, and sure. they're almost exclusively about f this, and they're not about the experience, <laughs> right? The idea that that shouldn't have happened. Yeah, and those were protest songs written by some people who just were like, "Hell no, I'm not going to go," or people who had to go. So, right. And also, a quick reminder, kids. This is why the hippies were wrong. Vote. Yes, definitely vote. Don't drop out. Vietnam may not have happened that way if they didn't uh, decide to mm -hmm. abdicate the power to the old folks. Yep. 
And the other thing is the, the hippies were right, do definitely demonstrate and march. Yes. That helped. It yeah. helped. So they were wrong and they were right. Exactly. Do the whole thing. Participate, <laughs> vote. Yeah, but, participate yeah. on all the levels. Yeah. But don't abdicate government to um, people who are too yeah. gung-ho. Now the song gets quiet. Um, he says uh, in the next lyric, which I like, um, we held the day in the palm of our hand. They ruled the night and the night seemed to last as long as six weeks on Paris Island. That's a nice uh, state. It is a perfect, it's a perfect little, it's almost like a haiku. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's too many syllables. Um, but it is a perfect little uh, bridge. It's a true, true thing about what it was like fighting that war from uh, all accounts I've heard. Daytime was good. We were in charge. Your choppers could fly, but they ruled the night. And the nights were terrifying and super long. And six weeks, of course, is uh, how long basic training is. Yeah. You got six weeks of training and then they <laughs> sent you to a war. <laughs> You're and, 19. You know, and it's worth noting that what this lyric is alluding to is one of the reasons Vietnam was so problematic as far as beyond just whether or not it should have happened. Yeah. But was that the military was underprepared to fight in a jungle. Yeah. They, so whatever training you got, you didn't get. You didn't get the right training because the right training didn't exist for the yeah. military. There is almost nowhere in the U.S. that uh, looks like that. Yeah. How? Yeah. No, you can't even recruit people who kind of are passingly familiar. I mean, maybe some part of Florida. Yeah. I don't know, but they could not have imagined yeah and um i've talked to a friend of mine have been talking about politics the last couple of days because you know of course and uh 9 11 one of the failures they mentioned was a failure of imagination right yeah talk yeah. about about a thing happened partly because it was outside of your scope of experience to imagine that thing happening Right. And likewise, the um, insurrection in the Capitol, one of the reasons it didn't get clamped down as fast as people think it should and as fast as it should have, right. was simply because you're talking about something that you, you didn't really imagine would happen. So it's a failure of imagination. And likewise, this song is referencing a failure to imagine, oh, wait a minute, the circumstances in which we're fighting are not what we're training for so it's not apt training so yeah so you are untrained effectively yeah, yeah the, the thing you were going to go do you're not doing that right so Insane. that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and yeah now it's really into very operatic uh and orchestral yeah we held the coastline, they held the highlands, uh, and they were sharp. Ooh, a turnaround. They yeah. were sharp, as sharp as knives. And this is knives, 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 knives. They heard the hum of the motors, they counted the rotors, and waited for us to arrive. Did your dad ever mention the counting the rotors thing? No. Okay. He was in the back line repairing radios. There yeah, wasn't sure. a lot of chopper traffic for him. Um, but that idea that, you know, the whole song has been about US soldiers until the end here. Yeah. And it really, you know, the, <laughs> the song kind of ends with them being in charge. Yeah. Um, they ruled the night, they held the highlands, and they were sharp, as sharp as knives. Um, by all accounts, a military with much less formal training, mm, yeah. but uh, home field advantage. Yeah. 
and fighting for um well the thing is they knew what they were fighting for right? yeah because that's uh -oh. their home Fucking existence yeah yeah and their enemy what we're not entirely sure why they were there yeah they were not prepared in many ways yeah uh and it yeah it was proof that you can't finance your way to victory yeah yeah we still try we still, yeah, try. We still try yeah overall uh overall a good song um musically it's fantastic yeah and it does it feels like it feels like it's a song based on songs about vietnam like it sounds without the lyrics you could play it and it's like a war song yeah it does feel like that yeah um and it closes out it's nice it's one of the songs he wrote what he's done which has an absolute ending which is nice i like that we've talked about that before some uh -huh. songs don't it closes Proper. with the same piano that we started with yeah we got and crickets and then John. silence and you know songs every song ends in silence of course but, <laughs> but this feels like silence is part of the song which and he, i think he pulls that off really well yeah i think you're right where yeah, um, it, it does feel like that long night yeah so yeah, there is some melodrama here, but I don't think it's um there there's nothing cynical about his intentions, I don't think. I think this is a well, this is a man, our 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 good friend Billy Joel, who intends <laughs> who intends to pay tribute to friends of his that have gone. Yeah. To speak to the experience as an artist. I don't think he ever pretended to be the guy. You know, he never misrepresented yep. his experience. Like I said, he very publicly said, yeah, I thought about going to Canada. Right. So, and yet the song is, uh, you know, has a lot of questions about the war, but it's very supportive of troops. Yeah. It, uh, not a bad word to say about the troops. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, it is very, it's a very fair treatment and a little, yeah, there's a little hokiness. And I think it's just what we all do where we sort of, when we don't have experience, we sort of fill in blanks with things we've seen in movies yeah. and books we've read. Yeah. We're like, oh yeah, Vietnam, they definitely listen to the doors a lot over there. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, wait, why do I know that? Yeah. Oh, that movie. Um, my mother does this to me all the time. She's 82 year old woman who watches a lot of uh, hour long dramas. So she thinks that every street corner on New York has a mugging in action and like dead bodies with chalk outlines. <laughs> and she's like, oh. but she will say to me, be careful when you go out, there's a lot of mugging in New York. And I will say, How, why, why do you say that? And then she'll inevitably reference a TV show. And I'll say, well, see, that was made up <laughs> based on a true story. Oh, that's you got to remember that 55 TV shows are based on one incident. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And if, yeah, if you watch Law and Order or any of those shows, you're going to think, man, a lot of. Oh, yeah. I don't want to look in any dumpsters because they all have hookers in them. Oh, dead hookers. You know, this song is on uh, Nylon Curtain, is that right? It is. And that, uh, which we talked about before, means the suburbs. Yeah. Um, the organized original suburbs where they uh, ex excluded uh, people of color. Um, but I think that album is, I'm going to call it his uh, disillusionment album. If you will listen to it, it's kind of political. And it's kind of like, he's too old at this point to have all these realizations, but he does sound like a kid coming home from college 
for the first Thanksgiving. Yeah. I was like, you fucking people lied to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat meat anymore. Um, is this, I think, what else is on this album? Is it Pressure and Allentown? I think so, yeah. Both, you know, Songs of Disillusionment, Scandinavian Skies. Scandinavian, yeah. The Disillusionment of Touring. <laughs> yeah, great. It's great all album, just like, anyway. It's fantastic, it's right? It might be my favorite one. Yeah, it's in a, a lot of ways. Album. It is like, oh, he's in a bad mood as usual, but with a point. <laughs> he's yeah. not just mad because he's mad. Yeah. Like, hey, no, I have actions. Can't like, Allentown is a very specific place and yeah. event. And, um, you know, he doesn't document historical events that frequently. Yeah. It's a lot of like, we were down at the soda shop and I had a leather jacket on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is like things that happen to other people. Yeah. Um, the, the song's pretty economical too. What now that we've gone through it, it's it benefits oh. from not being longer than it should be. He doesn't, you know, he, he doesn't tell you they listen to Doors and then go and also the Who. <laughs> yeah you know there's really a character it's just we yeah there isn't like a guy and making it we solves a thing that would have been a problem if it was a character because when you talk about numbered corpses then you would wonder so is the dead guy singing but you don't have to have that problem yeah no because now this is a general experience so that if one of your brothers died it's as if you died because you know, my nephew was in uh, Iraq and he wears a band like this. Mine is for an allergy. <laughs> His uh -huh. is for uh, a memorial for a friend. Right. And uh, he, uh, he went there pretty gung-ho because he, you know, 9-11 and he was the right age to go and he was also the right age to be filled with youthful passion and, and want to go do something and uh you know and it changed him and uh we've as a family have struggled with the va access and when you know so when i think about people bound together in that well he for the rest of his life will think about that guy and uh the band yeah. itself has broken once or twice he's gotten it replaced but he got so frustrated with that that he got a tattoo of the band because he was like, I wow. never want it to be gone. I want to always have his name here. Yeah. Because, uh, you know. It's, uh, it's impossible for us to know what that is. Yeah. There is, yeah, there isn't any knowing that. There isn't any, like, what it would be like. You know, we can picture, almost picture the, like, event but what we'll never right. be able to picture is what it's like to have it be three in the morning and to open up your eyes and to be back there and to be feeling that particular anxiety, that particular sadness, that particular disconnect. Yeah. At full volume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, uh, this world would be a lot better if, if people could admit that they just will never know what somebody else's experience is. Yeah. There are too many people who want to say like, I'm a wealthy white person, but I can imagine what it's like to be a poor black person. Yeah. You just cannot. Yeah. And you know, that's when you have to do that before you shut up and listen yeah. to somebody. And not enough people want to shut up. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's no money in it. There's no social media. <laughs> there should be a social media network for people who just want to listen. Yeah. My friend was observing that there are now on YouTube and podcasts and whatever, there are shows where people just talk about what other people were talking about on another show. Yeah. That sounds just <laughs> like an SETV sketch. That doesn't sound like that should be real life. But it's, <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't. It's a real thing. I've seen. So whole, what can you possibly glean from that? Yeah. Oy, oy, oy. Jim, there's a diamond behind you. There is. 
I think. Indeed. That's a diamond. It's just a very specific pattern. It is. A, I believe actually this is an artificial diamond, but I don't know that that matters. Oh, it is okay. indeed a diamond. It's a diamond. It's a big diamond. I got nothing. Why and, can't I uh, think of what? They're difficult to make. I'll say that. Ah, yes. You can only make them under uh, pressure. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Yep. Good job. <laughs> uh, that's funny. excellent. Kind of perfect, right? That's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> that's a, that was a pretty good hint. That was a pretty good one, right? Pressure. Yeah, good hint. Um, you didn't have to give multiple hints. No. Which is very good. Now, this is, I did the, I ended up doing the smarter version of what I was going to do. Originally, I got a picture of the machine they used to make artificial diamonds. And I was like, well, that's dumb. How would he know what that machine's for? Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, perfectly done. Yeah. And it's a great background. Yeah, it's cute, right? Yeah. My well, cute. Between that background and the shirt you're wearing, it's very Star Trek. Oh, nice. It is. It's almost like a Star Trek uniform. Wow. <laughs> and then yep. you're like shadowed by an inexpensive alien. And this is the this is the later in the season Star Trek outfit where the actor is starting to get fat because he's been working all year and they're late for the summer to come. Yep. yep. Craft services. Yeah, so, there, so it's got the thing to wind in front and constantly doing this. There's a lot of people who like Next Generation. One of the things they observe is just Picard is constantly going. It's a thing. He's constantly having to pull his suit oh, yeah. jacket. It's pretty funny. <laughs> and then the Will Riker turn away. People love that. Oh, yeah. I've always liked the, the leg up on the chair. Oh, the leg up on the chair is great. <laughs> oh, fantastic uh, move from him. Now, do you have a bit of trivia for us? Oh, man, you know what? I failed. I failed to track down some trivia. Here's what I'm going to do. I've got to look some up and steal it. <laughs> While you're like doing that? that, I will tell everybody what we're going to talk about next week. Oh, I'm excited. This um, is... Uh, yeah, say more. A, a, a friend of the show who likes our little show wanted us to talk about their favorite Billy Joel song. And I got to say, I like this song. It seems almost strange for this to be your favorite considering how all the songs Billy Joel has done. All for Lena. Oh, wow. That's a very good song. It is. It's uh, terrifying. Yeah. Now, as a as a preview, is that song supposed to be funny? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, we'll talk more about it because I've always taken it I have as to revisit funny. it. I've always found it to be somewhat comedic. Huh. All right, we'll I want to listen to it again. I know the piano is crazy. Yeah, it is. It's crazy. It doesn't sound like much of his other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but great. Yeah. Hey, did you uh, did you ever hear uh, uh, what Billy Joel's first top 10 song was? That's it's a pretty simple trivia question that I never thought about and just looked up. I am going to say his first top 10 song was uh, Just the Way You Are. You are correct. Nicely done. You know what's weird about that song too? This is how long Billy Joel's been part of the uh, pop culture zeitgeist is that Don't Go Changing ends up being this generic phrase if you're referencing someone who's smarmy. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. But it wasn't then. It's just that this was, this is a it's a beautiful song. It's just an AM radio song. It's a soft rock song. 
Yes, it was. Uh, yeah, it was definitely. It was the style at the time, as they say. Yeah. Uh, don't go changing. Yeah, and that's and they'll add a babe to it to hey, don't go change a babe or whatever. But yeah. it's a great song. <laughs> it's a great song, and and certainly in of a certain spirit at the time, but now post feminism multiple waves of feminism it's very controlling <laughs> yes it's just him telling her all the things she must not do yeah do not color <laughs> your hair no i, I don't like that <laughs> always and, have my unspoken <laughs> yeah unspoken passion <laughs> i don't want to talk to you because that's it's, what women like. They like, they want you to care, but just don't bring it up. <laughs> don't say it to them. <laughs> well, we can't start a whole new episode now. No, yeah, but that's a preview of when one of us eventually picks that song. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, next. <laughs> all for Lena. All right. Yeah, and I'm very uh, pleased that somebody else picked this song. That's just a delightful thing to have had happen. Yeah, so. that's fantastic. I would not have picked it for a long time. Yeah. Glass Houses, the last song on side one. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. But, and look, you are right, yeah. as the preview, it is musically nice and different from a lot of stuff he does. Yeah, it's very crazy. Okay, and cool. if it's And if it's about a woman he actually dated, I'm glad he got out alive. Yeah, based on just the piano of it. Yeah. It's so scattered and crazy. Yeah. All right. Great. I will look right. forward to it. Nice job, everybody. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. See you next time.